My name is Sam Backing. I'm the author of Malignant Self Love, Narcissism Revisited. Four decades ago, the Polish American Jewish author Jerzy Kuszynski wrote a book titled Being There. The book describes the election to the presidency of the United States of a simpleton, a gardener, whose vapid and trite pronouncements are taken to be sagacious and penetrating insights into human affairs. The being there syndrome is now manifest throughout the world. Empty heads such as Putin in Russia and Obama in the United States rule. Given a high level of frustration triggered by recurrent, endemic and systemic failures in all spheres of policy, even the most resilient democracy develops a predilection to strong men. These are leaders whose self-confidence, sang froid, and apparent omniscience all but guarantee a change of course for the better. These leaders are usually people with a very thin resume, having, having accomplished little prior to their ascendance. They appear to have uh, erupted on the scene from nowhere. They are received as providential messiahs precisely because they are unencumbered by a discernible past and thus are ostensibly unburdened by prior affiliations and commitments to special interest groups. Their only duty, therefore, is to the future. They present themselves as ahistorical. They have no history, and they are above it, history. Indeed, it is precisely this apparent lack of biography that qualifies these leaders to represent and bring about a fantastic and grandiose future. They act as a blank screen, a foil, upon which the multitudes project their own traits, wishes, personal biographies, needs and yearnings. The paradox is that the more these leaders deviate from their initial promises, the more they fail, the dearer they become to the hearts of their constituents, the more they are loved. This is because, like their, the voters, like the electorate, like their constituents, like the mob that brought them to power, the new chosen leader is struggling, coping, trying and failing. And exactly like his, the voters and electorate and mob that brought him to power, he has his shortcomings and vices. He is a reflection of his people. This affinity between leader and led is captivating and endearing. It helps to form a shared psychosis, a folie à plusieurs, between ruler and people, and it fosters the emergence of a hagiography. The propensity to elevate narcissistic or even psychopathic personalities to power is most pronounced in countries that lack a democratic tradition, such as China, Russia, or the nations that inhabit the territories that uh, once belonged to Byzantium or the Ottoman Empire. Cultures and civilizations which frown upon individualism, reject it, and have a collectivist tradition, prefer to install strong collective leaderships rather than strong individual men. Yet all these polities maintain a theater of democracy or a theater of democratically elected consensus, putting cause it sovereign democracy. Such charades are devoid of essence and proper function, and they are replete and concurrent with a personality cult or the adoration of the party in power. The world today is in hock to such leaders in many countries in the world we have this type of being there leaders simpletons who came from nowhere no biography and no accomplishments and the only thing they promise is change yet this change is badly defined or not defined at all and the people fall for it because they are simply desperate